Welcome back to Channels Business Global with me, Juliana Olayinka, from our studios here in London. The Fair Trade Foundation has called on the British government, chocolate companies and supermarkets to join an alliance aimed at boosting the income of female cocoa farmers, who they estimate are earning as little as just 23 pence a day. 60% of the world's cocoa is grown in West Africa, so the spotlight is on the region to do more. Nigeria is a major player in the market, but industry experts suggest that farmers there are not equipped to supply for the global demand. What more can be done to boost the productivity of Nigeria's largest agricultural export? Let's ask Oba Dokun Thompson, the Oloni of Etioni in Oshin State, an individual who's been using his platform to create a renaissance in the cocoa industry to help build bridges between production and consumption. Oba Dokun Thompson, thank you so much for joining me again on Channels Business Global. I know you've been extremely busy in Nigeria making sure your cocoa festival goes off later in the year without a bang. Uh, but we're talking about chocolate because it's a, quite a big story in the UK media at the moment. Fair Trade have put out um, a press release and according to them, even though the chocolate industry in the UK is worth four billion pounds, cocoa farmers, particularly in Nigeria and females, are only earning 23 pence a day. Can you just put that into some context for me. Why is it still now in 2020, those who are bending their backs and not reaping the benefits from cocoa? Um, I actually read the fair trade report. I am not sure on what parameters uh, they based the 23p per day. But in Nigeria, if we talk about Nigeria, I don't think that's actually the case. Mm. And when we talk about, uh, because the report was based on Ivory Coast and possibly Ghana. What, the West, West Africa w region. West Africa, yes. But um, in truth, we still need to go into more details because they need to give us um, the reasons why they said that. Mm. Yes, it's true, the women are not um, equally treated as the men when it comes to cocoa farming. But the 23p per day is still okay, a bit difficult. Okay, Oba What if we said 99p? 99p possible, yes. Um, it's but still pretty low. It's it's, still pretty it is low, low yeah. but um, at the same time, you also have to understand that it has to do with um, the amount of cocoa being farmed mm. in terms of the amount of land that each farmer has access to. But um, 99p could be also when we're looking at um, the labor force, mm. you know, not necessarily a cocoa farmer because most of the cocoa farmers actually own those farms or at least have leased the farms one way or the other. So, yes, they would do, it, it would be below $2 a day, wow. I, I, I would say so. But um, again, there's so many reasons why that's the case. The first thing is we have not successfully created a culture out of cocoa or chocolate. That's local culture, homegrown culture. When we begin to consume cocoa or chocolate or use um, the derivatives of cocoa properly in a way that adds value to it, then we would have been able to add value to cocoa. We would be able to understand why we need certain levels of standards, why we need certain um, levels of quality, you know. And then the farmers would also understand. So everything just starts working better. But um, there's so the many 20, the, issues the, yeah, and areas I, no, that are being focused on. Of course, on. we listen, you know, we're here in the UK. I know statistics can distort, especially when they're talking about Africa and Nigeria in particular. I want to talk about the, the healthiness of the cocoa industry in Nigeria, because according to some data that I've researched, you'll know more than me. Apparently, we exported over $500 million of cocoa over the past two years. There seems to be an increase um, in wanting cocoa. Um, is that true? And if it is, how is that money propping up the industry? Um, at the end of the day, what we need is increased output. Mm. What we've been doing over the last five, seven years, a sort of beginning, it's beginning to sort of create a renaissance in the Nigerian cocoa industry. And that's also encouraging people to at least um, produce more. 
learn how to produce more, how to increase productivity at the same time. And um, what that would easily do, especially when you now imbibe it as a culture, of, you know, create the consumption culture for cocoa, it means you can create multiple levels of jobs, mm. multiple, um, you can create opportunities also for entrepreneurs to be able to come in and even bring in more money. Mm. But um, we need an understanding and that's why we also are creating even end value or end product festivals and um, showcasing things like, um, you know, having yes, like the Eco Chocolate Show, which is coming up between the 3rd and the 6th of April. And um, it's all about talking cocoa, it's all about talking chocolate. And it's not just for Nigeria, but the whole of West Africa and the rest of Africa. No, so of course, that's and about I, I, adding I, I, value. I know you're doing a great job. And if you, you talk about um, adding value, mm -hmm. um, again, according to this <laughs> data that I've read, um, last year saw a 25% increase in the demand on cocoa than it had in the same time the previous year. And because of that um, um, increase and that surge in demand, the central bank have said that they're really going to try and help, um, you know, expand and boost cocoa productivity. Are you seeing any of that, especially where you're from in Etioni? Oh, well, um, interestingly, I was actually with the, um, the Cocoa Working Group of CBN about two, three weeks ago. Oh. And uh, they were actually, I, was, I met them in a meeting discussing how they're going to revive the cocoa industry or might maybe boost capacity and boost um, productivity and output. And it's not just a one-off thing. Mm. Don't forget um, demand and consumption is also increasing in the Middle East, in mm. Asia. Yes, we have some challenges right now in, in Asia, but um, eventually that would come up. And then at the same time, even while we're talking consumption, we're also talking challenges with output in places like Ghana caused by um, yes. weather situations mm. and stuff like that. So at times this pricing is based on some sort of ICCO projection, which is not always achieved. You have in some, in Ghana last year, they almost lost about 100, they were all short of about 100,000 tons, wow. which is a huge um, difference and a gap to be filled. And that's also helping, apart from the pricing, it's also calls on the Nigeria, Industry to beef up, to, or, to or beef Cameroonian up production. industry. Yes, of course, Absolutely. to fill that into that gap. Absolutely. What about the education for their farmers? This is not a quote from me. This is a quote from the director of the Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria, who's blamed poor funding and the failure of farmers to adopt new breeds. Do you think that's a fair statement? It is fair mm. in the sense that we work with um, Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria as well. It's underfunded, and as they also need to come out to create awareness. But when you don't have, when you lack the funds to be able to push out the understanding or the know-how of what you have, because they've developed what different series, about twelve different series. If the information is right, I know for the past two years we've exported five hundred million, not naira, dollars worth of cocoa. Why isn't the money trickling back? Which is why the first question, and going back to what Fair Trade was saying about the, the, you know, the farmers receiving 23 pence a day, perhaps there's a wider issue about the industry and not necessarily the headline about female workers. We can never really get that much value. $500 million out of an industry that is worth over $100 billion mm. is so small when it comes to the um, the overall quantity, market share, yeah, yes, absolutely. That we actually produce in terms of raw materials. Mm. But what we need to be doing is creating a culture. Our Royal Cocoa Festival dinner mm. is going to become a four-day event wow. whereby what we're looking at establishing is about cooperation, collaboration, partnerships, to unlock the opportunity. And more, the more money industry. for female farmers? And more money for female farmers, more money for everybody. Oh, brilliant. Once the, the communities are comfortable, 
then the farmers, I mean, the women also will be good. And I'm sure the women will be taken care of. Absolutely. Obadok and Thompson, thank you so much for joining me on Channel thank Business you so Global once again. Thank Bless you. you. Sadly, that's all we have time for today. But do get in touch with your comments and suggestions. I'll see you at the same time next week for more in-depth business analysis on Channel's Business Global. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.